Hello everyone, in this video we are going to show you how to uh, import uh, character files from Poser into Blacksmith 3D. We're going to do it in two ways, one through a CR2 import, another through is an OBJ import. Uh, so let us start off, we're going to use uh, Victoria 4 as our standard and uh, load this character in and uh, to Blacksmith 3D. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, you can either just drag or drop the CR2 file into the viewport, or you can do it through the file menu. We're going to do it through the file menu just to be explicit. So, uh, let me see. Here we go. So, here's the folder in which the file is contained. Uh, if we notice, we have a Victoria 4.2.cr2. Now, depending on your Windows setup or Mac OS, uh, this dot cr2 might not be visible in fact it's that way by default on windows installations um, if you're an advanced user you would have made these extensions visible uh, um, perhaps uh, so in any case um, there is also a thumbnail which is called victoria 4.2 it's exactly the same but it's dot png so if these extensions are hidden you're going to see two file names the same uh, but if you click on them, you should be able to see the file type, and it, indeed that's a CR2, and indeed this is a PNG, because if you uh, attempt to load this into the viewport, it'll just be an image. So this is the file you want. Um, so I'm just going to copy that path in there just so uh, I can, for easy access. Now, um, if you click the menu button here, if you click that, it'll toggle back and forth. But the preferred way is use the space bars to keep your hand uh, over the keyboard and just use your thumb to quickly hit that um, space bar to bring the menu up. And here we have our menu, our main menu. This is what you normally used to seeing across the top, but we present it here uh, because we have this sort of three panel system where everything is contained within these three panels. But otherwise, this is exactly the same as what you'd expect to see the menu up here file, edit, etc., help, etc., etc., etc. So we have file, import, and just we have happen to be at that same folder, but if not, you paste in the path um, to the folder we want, and we're going to say Victoria 4.2.cr2, 4 not the PNG thumbnail, okay? And we click open, and then we have a couple of options. There's import, morphs these are the pre-existing morphs that might already exist in the cr2 file and the, uh, the import textures so we're going to import the textures and not the morphs at this time and we click ok okay now the file has been loaded and we can see that uh, the textures exist on the on the surface here uh, because we are currently looking at color maps now, if you were looking at something else like transparency maps, you'd only see a couple of maps there, and everything else would say no map applied because you guessed it. There's no map. There's no transparency map, right? So if there's no ambient maps anywhere, for example, uh, displacement maps, none. Okay, so we have color maps. So if you load in um, a character and you see something like this where everything's no maps applied, you had import textures checked, you can see that there's actually textures, then check your display mode, because chances are you're just not looking at the right channel. So what we want to see right now is color maps. Okay, and this business up here, these are trans meant to be transparent overlays, um, and they don't currently have an actual texture map, they just have a, a transparency map associated with them. So tell you the truth, that one doesn't even have a transparency map. But its transparency value is no debt, no doubt set to zero. Um, but since Blacksmith 3D is an editor, it wouldn't make sense to just make these things transparent because you might want to paint a transparency map on that. And hence, you need to actually see the polygons. So that is why you see this stuff here. So if that confuses you, just you familiarize yourself with how these characters are set up and how transparency maps work, etc. cetera. So um, we're gonna address how to deal with those things in another video as far as managing them, uh, hiding them away, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not important for our workflow right now. So what we're gonna do is just do a, the most simple possible texture modification to this. 
So uh, we're going to just paint like a black line across the, her cheek and her neck here. And the reason why we're doing this is so it'll span multiple maps. Because this here is the face texture map and this here is the body texture map. And we're just doing it just to illustrate the fact that you're going to be editing more than one map. And you're going to want to export those and, and all of that. So we're going to go like this and just paint a little black smudge across there. Now, you can follow any of the other videos to, to figure out uh, what kind of a complex texture project you want to do here. Um, fill all that in. Fill in the blanks, etc., etc. Now, from this point, we'll assume you're done. You finish your texture. Now you want to export it back to Poser. Now, uh, the thing is, what you really just want is the texture maps have to be saved out of Blacksmith 3D because they just they, they exist inside the project file. So until they're exported, they don't exist anywhere else on your hard drive or whatever. So if you want to link those to a character in Poser, you're going to need to export those. So um, I have previously made a folder in the runtime called uh, Blacksmith 3D Testing. And if you can see here is my content runtime textures, Blacksmith 3D Testing. So I'm going to copy this whole uh, path just for convenience. So now when I say File, Export, I'm going to say Image Maps. And I've modified at least two texture maps here, but let's just say for the sake of argument, you might have edited all of them or most of them or whatever. Um, so what we want to do is we want to export all of them. So if we uncheck export highlighted images only, that means we're going to be prompted to export every map that exists in the scene. And those can be found in the manager here. So if you look in the menu, manager, image maps. Inside this folder, if you double click, this lists all the, the texture maps, uh, the image maps. Right? We just we called it image maps to avoid confusion because the word texture pops up in a few different places. So we want to make things explicitly clear. These are the, Im the image files that you're going to save to your hard drive um, with, in the form of JPEGs or PNGs or whatever and their maps. Some are for color, some are for bump, some are for uh, transparency, et cetera. All right? So we just call them image maps. Uh, so yes. And the other way to export it is you can just multi-select um, um, all the maps here and then click on export as well. Let's just do it this way. Uh, not export image, hi export highlighted images only. Image maps, OK. Now. Let's just paste in our, whoops, I'm going to escape that for a second. Okay, I'm going to do this uh, little little bit of uh, organization here. So number one, I paste, w without removing the original file name, I paste it in the path and added a little slash there. Uh, now I'm going to add a prefix uh, to this file name so it doesn't get confused with the actual original, right? So I'm going to say my texture. You notice I did it before in another folder, but pay no mind to that. And I'm going to actually just copy this prefix here uh, for the next images coming up. So it's going to be save it to this path. It's going to have this prefix, and it's going to keep the rich the rest of the original file name. All right. So I'm going to say save. Now from this point, all right, this is the next image in the list. Notice the path has been updated, so I don't have to do anything but that. But I want to add this prefix again to avoid confusion with any of the original maps. Uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. There we go. So we have saved out all these textures. Now let's take a look at this folder and see what we got. So um, large icons. And now we notice the, the textures look mostly the same as before, but we have these, uh, that sort of black smudge is a little tiny bit there. You can't see, but there. Let's bring that up, actually. Uh, so see, that's the part on the body map that we just paint that went across the neck. And here's the part that went across the face. But again, in general, you're going to do something a lot more complex than this. We just kept that really simple. 
just to illustrate the workflow. Now, that has been exported. Uh, so you can either go into Poser and manually change all the maps, or um, this is the recommended workflow at this time, is to export a map injection file. And what this will do is that this is like a, like a little pose file that will automatically set up these textures for you on the new character uh, or inside Poser. Uh, so, so here we have, for example, Victoria 4 is loaded up. And these are her original textures. Uh, when I say original, I mean we've added this jumpsuit just to make things PG-13. Uh, but in any case, here are the original textures before our modification. Now, let's go back here, and I'm going to export this. And, you know, you can honestly place this file in a number of places. Uh, so in here I have a library character, Blacksmith 3D Testing. I personally prefer just to put it into the character library because um, where you put CR2 files, um, but or you can put it in a pose folder. It's really up to you. Um, so I'm going to just put it in there. So I'm going to say my texture. Um, and so this is going to, and this is a standard as well. If you put an underscore a mat in, in uh, capitals, it's just when you see the file, you know what it is. You know that that contains material stuff. All right, so uh, I'm going to save this. And uh, now, okay, let's go over back to Poser. And I'm going to, first I have to refresh, I believe, my library. So here's my 3D content runtime, and I click this refresh. And then I go to my Blacksmith 3D testing folder, which I saved it, and I have my, my texture map. So if I double click this, it should put the textures, um, automatically apply them to the currently selected character, which is Victoria 4. Now it's important that these are in sync. If you had some other character that wasn't based on Victoria 4, this would not work properly because the materials would be different and everything. But here we go, we're gonna double click that. And voila, there we go. Our new modified textures have been uh, now applied to uh, their CR2 file to the character inside of Poser. At this point, you can do whatever you want with it. You can save this character back to the library, save it in a project file, um, a Poser project file, or whatever your workflow happens to be from this point is up to you. But this is how you do that sort of round trip and bring in the textures back in. Um, so uh, there's an important thing to note is that the CR2 file export from uh, Blacksmith 3D, it's, um, it was designed around the Poser 4 standard, and it can sometimes now get confused with the uh, material setup. For example, if you have, here's your, uh, you have this uh, shader tree, and in some cases it's simple, in some cases it's very complex, right? Um, so, uh, Blacksmith 3D does not handle a lot of the situations in that. Um, and if you export a CR2 file, you might not, it, just for the purpose of getting these textures, um, if you export, I say, from Blacksmith 3D back to uh, Poser, you might not get the, the, the texture set up properly. But when you use this mat file, uh, you're sort of, you're, you're, you're better off because there's less points of confusion because this file only contains the new uh, texture setup. Um, and, it, and it discards everything else. While if you exported a CR2 file, it's going to be a copy of the original CR2 file plus the modifications, and there might be some confusion with that shader tree. So uh, with that being said, um, to get textures out of Blacksmith 3D into Poser, set up properly, your mat file is the, definitely the way you want to go for that. Um, so, yes. Uh, otherwise, you could just set them up manually. You say, okay, well, here's my, uh, my color map, and I'm going to uh, browse, and I'm going to find it, which is here. This is what you do in all the special cases where it doesn't really work the way you expected. It's more advanced. 
you're using uh, specular maps or something which isn't supported um, currently by the uh, uh, the mat file or the CR2 import export. Uh, so you can just go and manually load your your texture like this and click open, uh, etc. And uh, that's a little more uh, time consuming, but the advanced user may want to do it that way, uh, or in just a special case where you find it's the, the images are just not uh, loading um, as they should be. But you're if you're doing texture maps, bump maps, transparency maps um, through uh, CR2 files into Pose, into Blacksmith 3D back in Poser, uh, using this mat file as you export should cover you in, uh, under most circumstances. Okay, so that is a round trip using your, um, your CR2. And uh, in the next video, we're going to show you in part two, we're going to show you how to do the same process, but with OBJ files uh, being exported from a poser instead of the CR2. So stay tuned for that video.